Field Marshal Bernard Law Montgomery, 1st Viscount Montgomery of Alamein, KG, GCB, DSO, PC, nicknamed Monty, and the Spartan General, was a senior officer of the British Army. He saw action in the First World War as a junior officer of the Royal Warwickshire Regiment. At Metairin, near the Belgian border at Bailiul, he was shot through the right lung by a sniper. He returned to the Western Front as a general staff officer and took part in the Battle of Arras in April, May 1917. He also took part in the Battle of Passchendaele in autumn 1917 before finishing the war as Chief of Staff of the 47th Division. In the interwar years he commanded the 17th Battalion, Royal Fusiliers and, later, the 1st Battalion, Royal Warwickshire Regiment before becoming Commander of 9th Infantry Brigade and then General Officer Commanding 8th Infantry Division. During the Second World War he commanded the British Eighth Army from August 1942 in the Western Desert until the final Allied victory in Tunisia. This command included the Second Battle of El Alamein, a turning point in the Western Desert Campaign. He subsequently commanded the British Eighth Army during the Allied invasion of Sicily and the Allied invasion of Italy. He was in command of all Allied ground forces during Operation Overlord from the initial landings until after the Battle of Normandy. He then continued in command of the 21st Army Group for the rest of the campaign in Northwest Europe. As such he was the principal field commander for the failed airborne attempt to bridge the Rhine at Arnhem and the Allied Rhine crossing. On 4 May 1945 he took the German surrender at Lundberg Heath in northern Germany. After the war he became commander-in-chief of the British Army of the Rhine in Germany and then chief of the Imperial General Staff. Early life. Montgomery was born in Kennington, London, in 1887, the fourth child of nine, to an Anglo-Irish Church of Ireland minister, the Reverend Henry Montgomery, and his wife, Maud. The Montgomerys, an ascendancy gentry family, were the County Donegal branch of the clan Montgomery. Henry Montgomery, vicar of St. Mark's Church, Kennington, at that time, was the second son of General Sir Robert Montgomery, a native of Inishowen in County Donegal, the noted soldier and proconsul in British India, who died a month after his grandson's birth. He was probably a descendant of Colonel Alexander Montgomery. Bernard's mother, Maud, was the daughter of the preacher Frederick William Farrar and was 18 years younger than her husband. After the death of Sir Robert Montgomery, Henry inherited the Montgomery ancestral estate of New Park in Moville, County Donegal. However, there was still £13,000 to pay on a mortgage, a large debt in the 1880s, and Henry was at the time still only an Anglican vicar. Despite selling off all the farms that were at Ballynalee, there was barely enough to keep up New Park and pay for the blasted summer holiday. It was a financial relief of some magnitude when, in 1889, Henry was made Bishop of Tasmania, then still a British colony and Bernard spent his formative years there. Bishop Montgomery considered it his duty to spend as much time as possible in the rural areas of Tasmania and was away for up to six months at a time. While he was away, his wife, still in her mid-twenties, gave her children constant beatings, then ignored them most of the time as she performed the public duties of the bishop's wife. Of Bernard's siblings, Sybil died prematurely in Tasmania, and Harold, Donald and Una all emigrated. Maud Montgomery took little active interest in the education of her young children other than to have them taught by tutors brought from Britain. The loveless environment made Bernard something of a bully, as he himself recalled, I was a dreadful little boy. I don't suppose anybody would put up with my sort of behavior these days. Later in life Montgomery refused to allow his son David to have anything to do with his grandmother, and refused to attend her funeral in 1949. The family returned to England once for a Lambeth conference in 1897. 
and Burnet and his brother Harold were educated for a term at the King's School, Canterbury. In 1901, Bishop Montgomery became secretary of the Society for the Propagation of the Gospel, and the family returned to London. Montgomery attended St. Paul's School and then the Royal Military College, Sandhurst, from which he was almost expelled for rowdiness and violence. On graduation in September 1908 he was commissioned into the 1st Battalion the Royal Warwickshire Regiment as a 2nd Lieutenant, and first saw overseas service later that year in India. He was promoted to Lieutenant in 1910, and in 1912 became Adjutant of the 1st Battalion of his regiment at Shorncliffe Army Camp. First World War. The First World War began in August 1914 and Montgomery moved to France with his regiment that month. He saw action at the Battle of Le Cateau that month and during the retreat from Mons, at Metairin, near the Belgian border at Bailiol on 13 October 1914, during an Allied counter-offensive. He was shot through the right lung by a sniper. Montgomery was hit once more, in the knee. He was awarded the Distinguished Service Order for Gallant Leadership. The citation for this award, published in the London Gazette in December 1914 reads, Conspicuous gallant leading on 13 October, when he turned the enemy out of their trenches with the bayonet. He was severely wounded. He returned to the Western Front in early 1916 as a general staff officer in the 33rd Division and took part in the Battle of Arras in April, May, 1917. He became a general staff officer with 9th Corps, part of General Sir Herbert Plumer's 2nd Army, in July 1917. Montgomery served at the Battle of Passchendaele in autumn 1917 before finishing the war as General Staff Officer 1 and effectively Chief of Staff of the 47th Division, with the temporary rank of Lieutenant Colonel. A photograph from October 1918, reproduced in many biographies, shows the then unknown LT, Carl Montgomery standing in front of Winston Churchill at the parade following the liberation of Lille, between the World Wars. After the First World War Montgomery commanded the 17th Battalion the Royal Fusiliers, a battalion in the British Army of the Rhine, before reverting to his substantive rank of captain in November 1919. He had not at first been selected for staff college, but at a tennis party in Cologne, he was able to persuade the commander-in-chief of the British Army of Occupation, Sir William Robertson, to add his name to the list. After graduating from Staff College, he was appointed Brigade Major in the 17th Infantry Brigade in January 1921. The brigade was stationed in County Cork carrying out counterinsurgency operations during the final stages of the Irish War of Independence. Montgomery came to the conclusion that the conflict could not be won without harsh measures and that self-government was the only feasible solution. In 1923, after the establishment of the Irish Free State and during the Irish Civil War, Montgomery wrote to Colonel Arthur Percival of the Essex Regiment, Personally, my whole attention was given to defeating the rebels but it never bothered me a bit how many houses were burnt. I think I regarded all civilians as shinners and I never had any dealings with any of them. My own view is that to win a war of this sort, you must be ruthless. Oliver Cromwell, or the Germans, would have settled it in a very short time. Nowadays public opinion precludes such methods, the nation would never allow it, and the politicians would lose their jobs if they sanctioned it. That being so, I consider that Lloyd George was right in what he did. If we had gone on we could probably have squashed the rebellion as a temporary measure, but it would have broken out again like an ulcer the moment we removed the troops. I think the rebels would probably have refused battles and hidden their arms etc. until we had gone. In May 1923, Montgomery was posted to the 49th Division, a territorial army formation. 
He returned to the 1st Battalion, Royal Warwickshire Regiment in 1925 as a company commander. In January 1926, having been promoted to Major in July 1925, he was appointed Deputy Assistant Adjutant General at the Staff College. Camberley in the temporary rank of Lieutenant Colonel, a position he held until January 1929 by which time he had been made a in 1927, he met and married Elizabeth Carver, N.E. Acute Hobart, widow of Oswald Carver, Olympic rowing medalist who was killed in the First World War. Their son, David, was born in August 1928. Elizabeth Carver was the sister of the Second World War commander, Percy Hobart. He returned to 1st Battalion, Royal Warwickshire Regiment again, as commander of Headquarters Company in January 1929 and went to the War Office to help write the Infantry Training Manual in summer 1929. In 1931 Montgomery was promoted to Lieutenant Colonel commanding the 1st Battalion, Royal Warwickshire Regiment and saw service in Palestine and British India. He was promoted to colonel in June 1934. He attended and was then recommended to become an instructor at the Indian Army Staff College in Quetta, British India. On completion of his tour of duty in India, Montgomery returned to Britain in June 1937 where he became commanding officer of the 9th Infantry Brigade with the temporary rank of brigadier. But that year saw personal tragedy when his wife died. While on holiday in Burnham on Sea, she had suffered an insect bite which became infected, and she died in his arms from septicemia following an amputation. The loss devastated Montgomery, but he insisted on throwing himself back into his work immediately after the funeral. In 1938, he organized an amphibious combined operations landing exercise that impressed the new commander-in-chief, Southern Command, General Wavell. He was promoted to Major General in October 1938 and took command of the 8th Infantry Division in Palestine. There he quashed an Arab revolt before returning in July 1939 to Britain, suffering a serious illness on the way to command the 3rd Infantry Division. On hearing of the rebel defeat in April 1939, Montgomery said, I shall be sorry to leave Palestine in many ways, as I have enjoyed the war out here. 